Hi, I'm Dan Fallon with New Era Systems, and this is a little show and tell on the Wolf Coach trailer that we have prepped and tested and aligned and is now ready to ship. Um, basically, functionality wise on this system, RF wise, transmission wise, everything is, a, is ready to go. There's a few more things we need to do on tail lights and stuff like that, but we wanted to, you know show that the trailer itself is completely functional. The unit is self-contained. Everything has doors that all shut. They all have uh, locking uh, latches on them. Um, and that is all for transportation purposes. Um, it has a hitch up front, which I'm sure you'll see in part of this video. Okay, so we're gonna move on to the actual functionality of this. Normally when you're operating this system, once you're up and operational, you would have this plastic down. The system actually has dual air conditioners. So you wanna leave this plastic down and zipped up to keep the cool air in, keep your equipment cool. Um, and one, in order to set it up, you need to lift certain parts of the plastic. But for the purpose of this video, we're gonna remove the entire piece of plastic so that you can see all the various pieces of equipment installed. All right, now as you can see, the plastic has been removed. You can see all the equipment that is installed. I mean, it comes with, you know, line strips for utility power from, you know, that small up to 400 watt TWTs that we've installed. Upgrades that we have done to this truck are that we've installed MCL 3200s, MT 3200s are actually the model. 400 watt EKU TWTs, these have been fully tested. We've also installed two MyTech up converters, EKU, also fully tested. We've put in a much better spectrum analyzer. It's an L-band analyzer, but that's all you need because this is, uh, you know, uses an LNB, so you're only using L-band for your receive. Uh, your transmit, you are using 70 megahertz. Obviously with these up converters, it's 70 megahertz in. That up converts, out it goes. On the receive, you do use L-band. What I have installed here for the purpose of the show and tell, if you will, is just a Comtech modem. I've used this modem to actually do a loop on the satellite and pass BER for about three hours. This is obviously not the type of modem you would have permanently installed. Uh, you know, you're going to be looking at more, uh, you know, DVBS uh, modulators and, you know, MPEG-4 encoders, etc. We're not installing any of that because that we're, we're leaving up to the customer when the customer orders the truck, however he may want that configured, just advise us and we will configure it accordingly. The system also has DirecTV installed, not exactly sure why you would need that. Video guys may know that or maybe that's just more for your own amusement, but DirecTV box is installed, installed there. This is the DirecTV antenna. This is obviously our transmission antenna. And then this is one of the air conditioners here. There's also an AC underneath that blows air up from underneath. All right, so as you can see, we have shore power cables that we built. Uh, these are 75 foot long cables. Most of the maintenance I've been doing, we've been using the shore power. However, on the other end, we're just tapped into a breaker, but we are actually installing the mail connectors on the other end so that if you have shore power available, you have the normal cam locks on both ends. If you were to use shore power, you open this panel here. Excuse me and your connections are here okay so here we have a transformer it's a 12.5 kva transformer which is more than enough to power you know well well over the equipment that's installed in this truck um, okay so cam lock connections if you're not familiar with them you push them in turn them you do that for all three you've got hot hot and neutral so it is a 220 system or 240 system. The one thing you do want to pay attention to is, as you know, there's, there's 220 out there, there's 240 out there. Uh, certain situations you may even have slightly lower voltage. So it would be worth your while, check it with a meter. 
and you'll set this switch accordingly. So if you have 240, set the switch at 240. If you have 230, set the switch at 230. If you have 215, 200, 190. So that covers any possible voltage range that you would hit. In the United States, you're basically going to have 240 or 220 no matter where you go. But overseas, you may need this lower voltage settings. So once you do have your shore power connected and your switch set at the proper voltage rating, you'll then turn on these breakers. There's a total of four, or rather uh, five breakers. This is a double, two singles, two singles and that will then allow this power to pass through to the rest of the system. So, so again, we wanted to show you how this worked here, but what we're actually gonna do is use the generator because the generator is gonna more than likely be the scenario that the client is using. So we do wanna show off the generator and the fact that it works. Just do wanna point out if you are running a generator, this transformer is completely out of line. Doesn't matter what anything's set to. However, it's just good practice to leave the breakers off. So when you do connect shore power, you know, you're already in the correct position. Okay, so the generator on this trailer is installed in this front left corner um, and you basically have two different accesses to it. Normal operating conditions, this plate is installed and stays installed. No reason to remove it, more for maintenance or in this case show and tell. And this is the other access, the primary access to the generators right here and there's the generator. This is the obviously the hitch side of the, of the trailer. You've got power. This is the connection for all of your lights. You have your safety chains here. So in case your hitch, something goes wrong with the hitch. And then of course, you also have the, the surge brake that's here. That's also attached to your, your vehicle. So again, you lose connection. This thing will stop. Normal trailer type stuff. So under here is our access to our generator, generator start, our selection from generator to shore power, and then all the breakers to power all of the equipment. We are gonna do this with generator power. Again, as mentioned, just so you can see the generator functioning. In order to run it off a generator, bus one, bus two, gen two, gen two. Those are the two things you use for that. Um, there is no other label for generator, so it's pretty simple. Um, if you are going to run it off of the transformer, meaning shore power, then this switch actually gets turned to transformer, and that was bus one, and bus two gets turned to that label transformer. That gives you your transformer, again, shore power. The only other setting on here is this 110 setting. What this 110 setting does is actually allow you to provide 110 volts for shore power. I personally have never seen anything like this used, so we, did, we opted to not do anything cabling wise with that because this and the generator is what everybody uses for these systems. So, um, all right, so with generator two, we turn, these three, three, these three buttons on, which is fuel gauge vent, and we need to turn our fuel pump on. Oh, fuel pump on. This is the pre-warm right here to pre-warm the generator. This switch, generator start select, generator two. There is no generator one, so generator two. And then start. Once it started up as it is, you know, I give it a second to stabilize, and then you'll start turning on your breakers. There's nothing here that draws a tremendous amount of current until the tubes are on, so the generator will have more time to warm up before any heavy power is pulled. Okay, I do also want to point out there's a patch panel here to plug in all different audios, etc. You got XLRs, you got BNC connectors for AES, um, SDI out, SDI in. So that is one of your patch panels on this system. 
Okay, so just very quickly, we've decided to go ahead and connect shore power because our concern is the noise of the generator, you will not be able to hear the audio. But again, as you see the generator works, well, now you're gonna see the shore power work. Our shore power is now hooked up. As mentioned, it was to defeat the noise of the generator so you can hear me better. Um, hooked up we run 240 here this switch is set to 240 and you can see we have our voltage on the meter here all breakers are I already turned all these breakers on here and now we're gonna go over to the panel that powers up all the equipment okay so this is the panel that powers all the equipment in the system on the, on the system um, the only three that you won't turn on are these and the fuel pump because that's for the generator um, so it's just a matter of flipping these on. Uh, actually, I sorry, I stepped back one second. I had already turned these over to transformer from generator. A plus one, bus two, I switch from generator, turn the transformer, powering these up. You already, if you can hear it, the air conditioner already kicked on. That's one of the ACs, and then the second AC is now on. And we now have power provided to all of the transmission and receive equipment in the back of the trailer where you control everything. Alrighty, so in here, the RC3000, obviously the antenna controller. We'll boot him up. We're gonna go through the quick procedure on setting this up and actually pointing to a satellite. Um, we're gonna get our spectrum analyzer turned on. Now the spectrum analyzer is actually very secure. This case was not made for this specific model, but I opted to use it because I wanted this set up where you drive this trailer tow it thousands of miles. Nope, this analyzer is not moving. Um, it is strapped down very securely and installed securely. Okay, so the RC3000, research concepts. Uh, their support is fantastic in case you need any support with any of the configurations on it. Um, we're also providing the manual, an electronic form, uh, version of the manual for you. But the uh, basic operations here, the system is just powered up. So the first thing we need to do is let it needs to learn where it is. So we hit number seven for position. Then we just hit three for auto. You can see long latitude and antenna bearing both say no source right now. So we hit three for auto. And now antenna deployment required to initialize position. So in order to deploy it, just hit enter. What this is gonna do is make the antenna stand straight up because the compass is on the back of the antenna. When the antenna's up, it's on the top of the antenna and that's the only way we're gonna get an accurate reading. Okay, so now the antenna is standing up. If you saw it there, it said waiting on GPS. It picked up the GPS. Now it knows its longitude and latitude. And now it's setting the heading, which is from the compass. And that's gonna give us a flux heading, a magnetic variable for this specific location. And then your antenna bearing. And it just scrolls through those screens and then puts you back to you know, the screen where you're gonna select what satellite you're gonna actually point to. Um, in our case, now I've, I've stored a few satellites. I think this will hold up to 20 different satellites in it. Um, so what we will do now is locate. And now it shows SES-10 because that's the last satellite I happen to be on. However, in order to change that, uh, we're gonna go, uh, let's see, uh, Preset is number two. Again, these are satellites I've preset in, and then you just scroll up or down to the satellite that you've saved. So SES 10, I hit enter to select that one. Um, hit enter again. And now it wants to know horizontal, vertical, or neutral. So I just select neutral because as you know, you're gonna to have to do a transmit polarization test with the satellite provider anyway. So now the dish is moving towards its target. 
Now this takes a while. Okay, so no, what, now what has occurred is it's actually scanned through the satellite. You haven't seen that because it's not, the camera's not pointed at the spectrum analyzer, but it's scanned through it. It found a peak. It goes further to make sure there's no stronger peak, and then it comes back to the actual peak signal. Okay, so now here we are locked on SES-10. There it is on the spectrum analyzer. All right, so now we're just gonna show you that the tubes, you know, the functionality of the tubes themselves. Another upgrade that we did do to this system is we put in bigger dummy loads so that you can actually transmit full power out of both transmitters into either dummy load and not be concerned about overheating the dummy load. When we originally received the system, it came with 100 watt loads, which now we have 500 watt loads installed. Those are actually in the back. Okay, so this is where we control our baseball switches. Um, this was the first switch the system hits. As you can see, or I'm not sure how well you can see, but I've got HPA1 going green light into the dumbing load, which means HPA2 would actually go out online. So the first check we're gonna do is just show you HPA1 performing, and then we'll switch this to the, switch the dumbing load over and show you HPA2 performing. The only trick to this as with a lot of setups, uh, you have to have the transmitters off not powered off, but the transmit off when you, when you throw the baseball switch. That's actually very important to prevent visoir and signals bouncing back, etc. cetera. Uh, the only other important one is this switch here, and this all has to do with whether you're receiving or transmitting horizontal slash vertical. So, uh, you know, th this here gives you a horizontal transmit, and this here gives you a vertical transmit. But then, of course, you can rotate the feed from the RC3000 controller also. So again, follow standard peaking procedures with the satellite provider, or standard cross-pole procedures with the satellite provider as you do with every other system. As mentioned, we have HPA1 going into our dummy load right now. We're gonna go ahead and transmit. It's gone through the heater time delay. Okay, so one thing I do want to show you here is that with these cables, you can patch your, you know, technically it's supposed to be your, your modulators, your DVBS modulator outputs, MPEG-2, DVBS, it's actually going to be MPEG-4 these days, but you can cross patch them in any way you so choose. So right now I am hooked up to uh, encoder one for the output of my, modem of my modulator so that would be this port here and with that I want to go into up converter one okay so system is up here just increasing my gain here my modem is right now at minimum level so I tend to always just max out the mode the uh, gain on the on the TWT and then play with my power from the modulator from there. But there you can see we're at 164 watts. The system will go up to 300 watts. Okay, so I'm just lowering the gain back down on this guy. I'm turning my RF all, uh, to standby. This is additional RF off. Um, both, you know, you need RF on and then transmit in order to actually make use of the tube. Point is, is I've turned this one off so that I can throw the baseball switch that I showed you earlier. I've thrown that, so now TWT, TWT number two can come up online. So here are, uh, now remember the patch panel that I showed you earlier. What I'm doing now is taking MPEG-1 the output of that, which is the output of modulator one. Again, I only have one test modulator installed and I'm patching that into up converter two. So now I have my same input going into up converter two. I tell it RF on, I tell it transmit. Transmit, 
<clears throat> and now I'm gonna increase my gain. You see the wattage starting to come up. And we're at about 130 watts here. So th these are fairly well balanced that I did spend some time getting them pretty close. Um, I, I think we're about 30 or 40 watts off, but that only amounts to, you know, less than a well, what, just over a db in this case so if you were to have to switch tubes they're balanced well enough that you're not going to aggravate the satellite operators um, and i just on this unit i did just increase my modulator output so that you can see 270 watts coming out of this 350 watts coming out of this. So I'm gonna stop there. Um, there's no point in going any higher right now. But again, functionality of both tubes, it's all very simple to use. I think this video actually covers most everything you need. Um, minus again, the RC3000, where the technical support on that is fantastic. And we will also provide an e-manual uh, one other thing that we did not show is the we actually have a dehumidifier on this system So we are put we are pressurizing the waveguide and mr. Thomas if you would be so kind Maybe show them a quick shot of the dehydrator Okay, and that's just a shot of the dehydrator there um, Environmental technologies pretty much are the only ones I know of that make them um, in the interim the tubes are cooling off right now So there that's why you still hear those running as you know, or maybe you don't know, anytime you're done transmitting with a tube, turn the transmit off, let it cool for five minutes before you turn power off.